Um, let's do it like this now. Let's, uh, let's move the soup pot right here. And let's take some of the butter, which we're going to add to the soup, and incorporate it in there right now. Now, the proportions for buttering this soup or any soup are traditionally two ounces of whole, soft, unsalted butter per quart of soup, okay? Now, obviously, you wouldn't put butter like this into a chowder because it would just end up melting and then all the butter fat would come to the top. It would never become part of the soup. It would separate. said I was going to puree the butter into it and I pureed the soup a little more at the same time. I just want to give this a quick taste. I always like to keep in touch with where I am at the different stages of the flavoring of the soup. Now we're going to add the cream to the soup. Shut those burners off so I don't sweat to death back here. And Richard, I need a whisk. Uh, if you could grab one over, there's a bunch of them over there. And now the soup, bisque soups are traditionally seasoned with cayenne pepper. Uh, don't ask me why, but we're going to season it with a little bit of cayenne pepper. It has that little extra bite. Thank you, sir. Let's see what it tastes like now. Tastes good. Now we're going to add the burnt brandy, which I have right here. It's another flavoring agent for finishing the four primary bisque soups that there are. Again, oyster, crayfish, shrimp, and lobster. The soup is going to need some salt. And it's going to need a little bit of cayenne pepper. Or as they say on TV, some cayenne pepper. I caught that once for about five minutes. Um, all right, let's give it a taste now. The soup is good. What would I do to this soup now? Let me see here. I'm going to taste it again to make sure I'm satisfied with it. The soup doesn't need much done to it. I'm going to put a pinch more salt in there. And Richard, you got some sugar over there? Can you bring some sugar over? Richard, who's our illustrious producer of these DVDs, is a jack of all trades. Now, thank you, sir. One of the things, I don't know if it says in this recipe or not, is a, um, um, kosher salt and cayenne pepper to taste. If you think, you don't want to make your soup sweet, but there's such a thing as adding enough sugar to it, it just kind of softens it up a little bit. It's a little bit like when you add the two ounces of whole butter per quart. It mellows it and gives it that extra little flavor that you're looking for. So I put a teaspoon of sugar in there, give or take. So if there's any little teeny weeny little bittering edge to any of the pureed foods that are in it, that little piece of sugar in there that just softens it up for you, see? I'm gonna go just a little pinch more sugar, just a little bit pinch more salt. Now you'll notice the way this is being tasted and I'm bringing it to the plateau or the proper elevation of uh, both seasoning and flavoring earlier. And that's how you do it. There is no other way to do it, except gradually until you reach right where you want to be, then you stop. Which I'm gonna put just a pinch more salt in here still. The soup is good right now, but I'm gonna put a pinch more sugar and a pinch more salt in it again. 
I go through so many spoons in this place, you wouldn't believe it. Now let's say your soup you thought was too thick. This would be a moment where you could add some cream, unreduced right to it, which I don't think it's too thick, but it might be just a pinch. We'll just add a little bit more cream to it. One final taste. The soup still needs a pinch more salt, believe it or not. Let's have a taste of that. I'm gonna put a pinch of sugar in there. This should be it. It's good, it's where I want it. Now, I didn't drag that off you on purpose. That was the process by which one would taste and season, taste and season, taste and season. In that process, you learn how to taste it because you see the flavors coming out more and more as you add the seasoning to it. Okay, we have the soup done now getting it into a bowl and get putting a little garnish in it, okay? So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna show you real quick how to make a couple of uh, soup croutons out of some French baguette bread here, okay? You can use whatever bread you want, but this makes specially nice round croutons. And what I have here is some clarified butter. I'm gonna put a little bit of clarified butter in this pan. And we're gonna make ourselves a couple of croutons. Now normally, this is something that you would make earlier on, not when you're ready to serve the soup. But I'm not serving the soup to anyone except you. It's more important that you see how the process takes place. So normally you would make your croutons and just leave them on a napkin sitting in the kitchen on a plate somewhere near where you're gonna serve the soup into the bowls. And I have a little bit of chopped parsley here. And I'm gonna put the, the, the butter's getting a little hot here, so I'm gonna throw the bread in. This is very easy to burn the bread there, by the way. So what we're going to do is, um, if I can get past my mess here a little bit, which I usually can, um, we're going to. I have some of the shrimp that I saved that I didn't puree into the soup for garnish. So what I'm going to do is I cook them slightly in a little bit of butter. Now I just cut them in half like this here. So now remember, this is just a garnish. You don't need a whole bunch of shrimp in the soup. On the other hand, if you want, you can get yourself a bunch of those little small salad shrimp, for example, and maybe use more of those. But I wouldn't use more than three halves of this little soup here, because what you really want is you want people concentrating on the flavor of the soup itself, not getting carried away with the garnish. But I'm going to put a couple of other, oops, a couple of other garnishes in there um, to show you a couple of options. Okay, that bread's toasted. Don't let me burn that bread. As if you can remind me. Richard, you don't let me have to burn the bread. Um, and I'll just take, let's just take a little, little teeny bit of tomato in here. Make some, what we call some cold tomato concus in here. And I'm turning over the bread. You can see how that bread is coming along here. Okay. I have to stay with it though because it's gonna it'll it'll go away on me if I don't if I don't. That's cooked enough right now on both sides. Let's see. Oh yeah, see that? There we go. Now let's do this here. Let's ladle some of the soup into the bowl. Now normally to serve your soup, you want a nice hot bowl. Don't serve, fill it up too high. And drop a crouton in. Let's go with one crouton on this soup. And let's go with little pieces of shrimp. You can float them right on top. And just for a little teeny weeny 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 pinch of added color, we'll take a little bit of chopped tomato and a little pinch of chopped parsley. And you're in business right there. Don't overkill the soup on the garnish. Um, if you want to put a second crouton in, you certainly can do that too. There you go. There's some shrimp bisque. And remember one thing about this recipe. The garnishes also. You can make all four of the primary bisque soups that there are, which are lobster, uh, shrimp, 
uh, oyster and crayfish using this exact same process. You just change the primary ingredient and maybe change the garnish a little bit. So there you have it, shrimp bisque. That answers that question, I hope. Bye-bye.